Good day and welcome to Mission Control Houston. Uh, today with us is Paul Brower, the lead ICE officer in the uh, control room working with a lot of the Dragon SpaceX activities on this mission. Uh, why don't we start off with you explaining what an ICE is. What's the acronym mean, Paul? Sure, uh, so we're the integration systems engineer and uh, our, our job is basically to, to integrate with all of our, our visiting vehicle partners that come to the International Space Station on the U.S. segment. Uh, so my job is to kind of be in communication with those guys. Uh, I'm supposed to be the expert here in, in Houston uh, on their vehicle systems and, and how they connect up to the International Space Station. So I kind of keep an eye on what their systems are doing and what our systems are doing and, and make sure that we can all uh, play well together in space in orbit. Okay. Now, we've all heard a lot about the visiting vehicle officer, and this is a little bit bi different from what they do. Can you compare those a little bit? Sure. So the the visiting vehicle officer, they're actually from our, our division here at NASA that's responsible for trajectory. So they do uh, orbital mechanics and guidance, and they're basically looking at at uh, how the vehicle is approaching the space station, uh, how it's coming in from a guidance perspective, and we're looking at all of the systems. So we're looking at the communications, we're looking at the power levels, we're looking at the propulsion system. So uh, the VBO, uh, Sean O'Rourke for this particular mission and I, we work really closely together to make sure um, together that we understand how that spacecraft is working and that it's gonna come safely to the space station. Okay, uh, well, what uh, specifically have been your big challenges of this mission? Uh, there's there's been a few. Uh, you know, the first time you fly a new vehicle, it, it's it's always challenging, right? You never know what you're going to expect. And we spend a lot of time with the SpaceX team. We spend a lot of time here in, in Houston trying to prepare for whatever might come our way. But inevitably, what happens on orbit is, is never what you, you expect exactly, right? So uh, we had a few challenges with this, this particular flight. We had um, some computers on the Dragon uh, decide to lock up on us, and, you know, they, we were able to reboot them. Uh, we had some sensors go bad as we were flying, some sensors on some of the propulsion system, um, and, you know, we had to, to take care of that. Um, and then we had some problems a little bit with some of the laser rangers and some of the thermal imagers that they used to figure out how far away they are from the space station as we were coming on the approach. And that was on the Dragon side. Uh, on the space station side, we actually had a couple problems with our GPS system uh, on the space station right before their mission started. So uh, we were a little bit worried. We actually replaced one of the GPSs on the space station. We had the, the crew go do that. Um, but those those locked up on us a couple times, and uh, we actually used that GPS data. We send it over a, a radio link to Dragon, so the Dragon can kind of figure out where it is and where the space station is and, and fly to us. So uh, it, it was definitely an, an interesting and challenging mission, but uh, I think in the end we, we, we won against all of the, the demons coming after us. So That's great. Um, how's it been to work with the Dragon team? Uh, it's It's been a really, really cool experience. You know, I, I, I remember uh, when I first started working with those guys about, about three years ago, we went out to lunch and we were we were telling them some of the stories that we've had to of things we've had to deal with on the space station. You know, we've had shuttle missions where we've had all the five Russian computers lock up and, you know, we've had loss of attitude control and we're trying to recover from all of that. And I, and I remember watching the SpaceX guys, their, their eyes kind of getting wide as they're listening to all of the, the challenges that we've had to deal with in the past. And, um, They've done a phenomenal job, you know, coming in and having to deal with some of those same kind of things themselves on this mission. So um, I really think they did, did an excellent, uh, excellent job working with us, getting contingency procedures ready, and just really calmly handling everything that happened on this flight to get to get us up to the space station. So, you know, usually communications about various issues, especially problem issues, are yeah. really crisp on the NASA side. Is it the same way working with the SpaceX folks? Uh, yes, I, I think maybe the the only exception is you know being their first flight. I could hear a lot more cheering in the background, but their team was the team that was actually flying the vehicle. I mean, very professional, uh, very calm, and very crisp uh, flying the mission. But you could hear in the background, you know, they had almost their their whole company I think standing behind the glass of mission control, watching, and a lot of those engineers who had you know poured five, six, seven years of their lives into this mission, cheering loudly. So so every time. Uh, we were trying to get something done right at the very end at a big moment like the capture moment. You could hear those guys in the background, which was, which was pretty exciting, actually. So have you had a chance to visit the SpaceX control room yourself? Uh, yeah, actually, we, we went over there uh, quite a few times as we were getting ready for this mission. We got to see uh, sort of what they have it set up. But, um, I was actually you know, pretty amazed. We, we end up, you know, they designed their, their control center completely independently of, of us designing ours. But we kind of ended up with a lot of the same sorts of tools, you know, we have plotting tools and mission control and things that monitor telemetry and give us little warnings if, if something's going wrong. And, and they end up with a, a lot of the same kinds of things in their control center as well. 
they have come at things a little bit differently that from some of the other visiting spacecraft and, and uh, cargo vehicles we've dealt with in terms of the Japanese HTV and the uh, European Space Agency's ATV. Uh, they've taken a, a unique approach in some of these. Uh, can you pull out one of those and talk to us about an example of what how those things differ? Uh, yeah, you know, I, I think um, probably one of the the most interesting things about their team is I think uh, you know, here here at NASA, we have uh, people who are sort of dedicated to mission control. You know, they just do operations, and we have people dedicated to engineering. Um, their team has started out a lot smaller, and so a lot of their people were very much wearing many hats, right? They they had, you know, people who were running simulations who were also going to be mission controllers who were also designing and actually going out and helping manufacture pieces of hardware. And so I think that's one of the more interesting things that I, I've seen from a smaller startup company um, that's a lot different from how we, we do business here, but, you know, of course, they're dealing with a, a smaller spacecraft and, and a newer company, so it's been uh, been pretty interesting. Okay. Well, hey, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, where are you from originally, and what was your path to get here to NASA? Uh, so I'm, I'm from New Jersey, uh, the, the great tiny state of New Jersey, and um, I went to Purdue University. I got a, a bachelor's degree in aerospace engineering, and I, I always wanted to work for NASA. I always wanted to be in mission control, so this is kind of a, a dream come true for me. Um, when I was at, at Purdue, I did a bunch of um, space societies, and I did uh, some experiments, actually, where we flew on the um, zero gravity, NASA zero gravity plane. I designed some experiments that we flew up there. So um, I got really involved in NASA early on. I did our co-op program here and then uh, came here to work in, in mission control. That's great. Um, and are there any special qualities that you and any ICE team member you feel brings to bear here in mission control? I mean, everybody, there's a different set of skills for every uh, position here. Uh, what's what's the thing that makes ICE people stand out? I think, um, you know, most of the, the controllers here today, you know, we've had the space station up for 10 years, and a lot of them have, have a pretty, I'd say, stable system in that it's not, you know, we're not building up the space station much anymore. Um, the ICE team has to deal with a lot newer stuff now than um, most of the other uh, controllers who now have, you know, got their procedures sort of matured over 10 years. And so we're dealing with a lot more uncertainty, which is a lot of what the space station was 10 years ago when it was first being built. Um, but I think that's what makes us a little bit different today is that we have to be prepared a little bit more uh, for the unknown, being that these are brand new spacecraft coming up for the first time and you just never know what's going to happen. Uh, you touched on earlier uh, the level of excitement at SpaceX uh, associated with this mission. Can you share a little bit of that from behind the scenes on on how that's manifesting itself with your team? Sure. Um, you know, you actually you can you can watch the the video from the, the caption. You can actually see me in the little corner, and my wife said my my eyes lit up like I just you know won the lottery or <laughs> was a little kid in the candy shop. Right. I'm I'm cheering and clapping. Um, a lot of us who have, you know poured our hearts into into this mission for three or four years, and certainly the SpaceX guys have done so. You know, ten times more than we have here at NASA. Um, it's really just, it's a moment you, you can't even describe when you finally get to, to accomplishing such a difficult and challenging task um, that you've been working on for so many years, and to see it actually happen on orbit is, is just an, an indescribable feeling. I mean, that's the reason I love working here, is, is to have that, that moment. And this isn't uh, the end of the new things. Uh, we've got another uh, commercial spacecraft that's uh, being readied for flight. Uh, that's going to be the orbital vehicle. Um, are you going to be working with those folks? Uh, yeah, I, I'm not personally assigned to that mission, but you know our assignments change a lot. I might be, but yeah, this is certainly um, just the beginning. You know, we have the orbital folks coming online, and then hopefully down the road we we're talking about commercial crew, and there may be other vehicles uh, coming down the line. So this is the hopefully the the start of a very exciting era for NASA and for the commercial sector as well. And of course, now that we've accomplished the first demonstration mission for SpaceX and Dragon, uh, they've got a formal cr uh, commercial resupply flight that's scheduled to happen later this year. Are you going to be working that one? Yes, I'm actually I'm assigned to be the lead on that one. We're already talking about you know getting our little planning meetings together to, to prepare for that mission. So uh, yeah, it's going to be a busy year for my group for sure. Great. Well, hey, Paul Barr, thank you so much for being here from the ICE console today in Mission Control. We really appreciate your help. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me.